Chapter Fifteen: Purpose Performing Penguins. At that moment, they were interrupted by the manager, who came in with a groan. "What's the matter?" asked Mister Greenberg. "The marvelous Marcos, who closed the program, haven't turned up, and the audience are demanded their money back." "What are you going to do?" asked Mister Greenberg. "Give it to them, I suppose." And it is Saturday night, night, the biggest night of the week. I had to think of losing all that money. I have an idea," said Miss Barbara. "Maybe you won't have to lose it, as long as it's the end of the program. Why don't we just have the penguins rehearse in there on a real stage? We have more room, and I think the audience would enjoy it." "All right," says the manager. "Let's try it." So the Penguins had their first rehearsals on the real stage. The manager stepped on out on the the stage, ladies and gentlemen. He said, raising his hand with your kind indulgence, we are going to try out a little novelty number tonight, owning on in a to unforeseen circumstances. The marvelous Marcos are unable to appear. We are going to let you see a real hero of the proper performing penguins. Instead, I thank you. In a dignified way, of the puppers and the penguins walked out on the stage, and Miss Popper sat down at the piano. Are you going to take up your gloves to play? As the manager, oh no. Said Miss Barbara, "I'm so used to playing with them, but I keep them on. If you don't mind." Then she started Schubert's Minitaries March. The penguins began to drill very nicely, whirling and twanging, changing their performances with great precision until Miss Barbara stopped playing in the middle of the piece. The audience clapped vigorously. There more to it," explained Miss Popper, half to the manager and half to the audience, where they formed in a hollow square and mud. In that formation, it's so neat. We keep that tonight and jump to the second part. You're sure you don't want to stick your gloves on, Madam?" asked the manager. Miss Popper, smiling, me shook her head and began the merry widow once. Ten of the penguins now formed in a semi-circle, as Nelson and Columbus, in their midst, put on a wise bearing. Contrast: the round black heads leaned far back so that they could watch each other with round white eyes. Go," said Nelson, punching Columbus in the storm, stomach with his right flippers, and the trying. To push him over with his left flipper, go," said Columbus, going into a clinch and hanging his head over Nelson's shoulder as he tried to punch his him in the the back. "Hey, no fair," says the manager. Columbus and Nelson broke loose as the other ten penguins, looking on, applauded with their flippers. Columbus now square. Spar politely with Nelson until Nelson hit him on the eyes. Whereupon Columbus retreated with a loud oak. The other penguins began to clap, and the audience joined them as Miss Popper finished the work. Both Nelson and Columbus stopped fighting, both down their flippers and stood still facing each other. While which bird won? Who's ahead? Shouted the audience. Said all the ten penguins in the semi-circle, "This must have meant look for Nelson." Turned to look at them, and Columbus immediately punched him in the stomach with one flipper and knocked him down with the other. Nelson lay there with his eyes closed. Columbus then counted ten over the prostrate Nelson, and again the ten other penguins applauded. That's part of the act, explained Jolly. The other penguins all liked Columbus to win, 
and so they all say "gook" at the end. That always makes Nelson look away, so Columbus can soak him good. Nelson now rose to his, to his feet, and all the penguins from in a row, and bowed to the manager. Thank you, said the manager, bowing back. Now comes part three. Said Mr. Popper. Oh, Papa, said Miss Popper. You forgot to bring the two painting step ladders and the board. That's all right, said the manager. I'll have the stage hands to bring some. In no time at all, a pair of ladders and a board were brought in and Mr. Popper. And the children showed them how the ladders had to be set up with the board resting on stuff. Then Miss Purple began playing the pretty descriptive piece by the brook. At this point in the act, the penguins always forgot their discipline and got dreadfully excited. They would all begin showing at once to see which could be the first to climb the ladders. However, the children had always told Mr. Purple that the act was all the funnier. For all this pushing and scrambling, and Mr. Papa supposed it was. So now, with a great deal of squawking, the penguins fought and climbed the ladders, and then across the board in complete confusion, often knocking each other entirely up to the floor below, and then hurrying to talk, broken down the other ladder and knock. Of any penguins who were trying to climb there. This part of the act was very wry and noisy, in spite of Miss Popper's delicate music. The manager and the audience were all holding their sides, nothing. At last, Miss Popper got to the end of the music and took up her gloves. You all have to get those ladders off the stage, or. I'll never get these birds under control," said Mister Proper. The surgeon is supposed to fall at this point. So the manager gave the signal for the curtain to go down, and the audience stood up and cheered. When the ladders had been taken away, the managers had twelve ice cream cones brought in, and the penguins. Then Johnny and Bill began to cry, so the major ordered several more, and everybody had one. Mr. Greenbaum was the first to congratulate the puppers. I don't mind telling you, Mr. Popper, that I think you got something absolutely unique in those birds. Your art is a sensation, and the way you helped our my friend the manager here shows that. Your real chopers, the kind we lead in the show business. I like to predict that your penguins will soon be backing the biggest teachers from our region to men. And now to come to terms, Mister Popper, he continues. How about a ten-week contract at five thousand dollars a week? Is that all right, Mama? Asked Mister Popper. Yes, that's very satisfactory. Answer, Mister Miss Popper. Well then, send Miss Greenhouse Bums. Just sign these papers and be ready to open next third days in Seattle. And thanks again, said the manager. You would you mind are putting on your gloves again for a minute, Miss Popper. I like you to start playing that military march again. And let the penguins spread for a minute. I want to get my ushers in here to look at those birds. It will be a lesson to them. Chapter sixteen on the road. During the next day, there was much to be done at Four Thirty Two Brownfoot Avenue. There were new clothes to buy for. All of them, and the old ones too, packed away in moth burrows. Then Miss Popper had to scrub and polish and straighten the whole place, for she was much too good a housekeeper. 
actually everything at six, sixes and sevens while the purples were away. Mr. Greenbaum sent them their first week's pay in advance. The first thing they did was to buy up the man who had installed the freezing plant in the basement. He had been getting rather uneasy about his money, and after all, without him, they could never have trained the balance. Next, next, they sent a check to the company who had been shipping the fresh fish all the way from the coast. At last, everything was done, and Mr. Purple turned the key in the door of the little house. They were a little late in arriving at the railway station on account of the argument of, with the traffic policeman. The argument was on account of the accident to the two taxi cabs with four puppets and twelve penguins, not to mention us, the eight suitcases and pail of water with the live fish for the penguins' lunch. Lunch, Mr. Purpose found that they could not all fit into one cup, so he had to call a second one. Each of the taxi drivers was easy, eager to be the first to get to the station and surprise the people here by opening the door of his cup and letting out six penguins. So they raced each other all the way, and in the last block, They tried to pass each other, on a, and one of the fenders got torn off. The traffic officer literally got very much alive. Annoyed. The train was on now to pull out the station when they arrived, even with both taxi drivers helping them through the gate and over the brass rails onto the rear observation platform. They barely made it. The penguins were gaping. It had been decided was that Mr. Popper should ride in the back lit car with the penguins to keep them from getting nervous, while Miss Popper and the children should ride in one of the pullmans because of getting on at the the observation end of the train. Mr. Popper had to take the bus through the whole length of the train. It was easy enough to get them through the club car, even with a pair of fish to carry. In the sleeping cars, however, where the porter was already making up some of the birds, there was trouble. The porter's ladders offered too much temptation to the penguins. There were a dozen happy arts from a dozen actors, six weeks. Purpose performing penguins completely for getting their discipline, far to climb the ladders and get into the upper berths. Poor Mister Purple, one old lady screamed that she was going to get up the train, whether it was going ninety miles an hour or not. Not a gentleman. Wearing a coloured man's collar, suggested opening a window so that the penguins could jump out. Two porters tried to screw the birds out of the birds. Finally, the conductor and the brakeman with a lantern came to the rescue. It was quite a while before Mr. Bubble got his bag safely into the baggage car. Miss Popper worried a little as a staff about the idea of having Johnny and Bill miss ten week of school while they were on the road. Though the children did not seem to mind, and you must remember, my love, said Miss Popper, who had never before been, who had never before been out of still water, in spite of his dreams of distant countries, that travel is very broadening. From the start, the penguins were a riotous success. Success, even their opening, opening performance in Seattle 
went up with our hitch properly because they had already rehearsed on the real stage. It was here that the penguins added a little novelty number of their own to the program. They were the first thing to the bill when they